U.S. President Donald Trump appeared to forget the words to the American national anthem as he stood on the pitch before a huge football game. The former Apprentice star seemed to stumble his way through the star-spangled banner in front of a live crowds of tens of thousands of people and TV cameras. Trump took to the pitch before the college football playoff national championship game between the Alabama Crimson Tide and the Georgia Bulldogs in Atlanta. But footage shows the U.S. leader seeming to struggle with the words, instantly prompting more speculation on social media about his mental health. Last week Trump claimed he was a stable genius on Twitter and denied he had mental health problems after a bombshell book claimed he was semi-literate. People were quick to comment on Trump seeming guilty struggling to remember the words to the national anthem. Nick Lipper wrote on Twitter, American, your president, you know, the hash MAGA guy, doesn't know all the words to our national anthem. This is a gross display of hypocrisy. Also, here's a daily reminder that he has a 37% approval rating. Least popular president of all time. Sean King wrote, the man clearly does not know the words to the national anthem. This is indisputable. All of that hate he has spewed toward black folk about taking a knee and the man doesn't know the words. A disgrace. Annie Salak added, a twist I did not see coming. Donald Trump does not know the words to the national anthem. And James Melville said, not knowing the words to the national anthem is more disrespectful than kneeling during the national anthem. In November Trump branded NFL players weak and out of control after players refused to stand for the national anthem during games. He said, at least 24 players kneeling this weekend at the NFL stadiums that are now having a very hard time filling up. The American public is fed up with the disrespect the NFL is paying to our country, our flag and our national anthem. Weak and out of control. The protest was started by athlete Colin Kernick's lead and was in protest against social injustices, such as rashing inequality and police brutality in America. During the 2016 preseason, Kernick remained sat on the bench during the national anthem, before opting to kneel after speaking to members of the armed forces. Kernick said, I'm going to continue to stand with the people that are being oppressed. To me, this is something that has to change. When there's significant change and I feel that flag represents what it's supposed to represent, and this country is representing people the way that it's supposed to, I'll stand. Last week, Trump was forced to deny he has mental health problems following claims in Michael Wolff's explosive new book. Michael Wolff's immediate bestseller, Fire and Fury, Inside the Trump White House, has depicted a chaotic administration and Trump as someone who isn't fit for the Oval Office. It claims the president barely reads, his comprehension of basic politics is limited, his attention span and focus are lacking, and he doesn't bother to listen to staff, instead relying on his own expertise. Pitching policy to him is like trying to figure out what a child wants, one aide, Deputy Chief of Staff Katie Walsh, was quoted as saying. In response to doubts about his mental state, Trump wrote on Twitter, now that Russian collusion, after one year of intense study, has proven to be a total hoax on the American public, the Democrats and their lapdogs, the fake news mainstream media, are taking out the old Ronald Reagan playbook and screaming mental stability and intelligence. Actually, throughout my life, my two greatest assets have been mental stability and being, like, really smart. Crooked Hillary Clinton also played these cards very hard and, as everyone knows, went down in flames. I went from very successful businessman, to top TV start the President of the United States, on my first try. I think that would qualify as not smart, but genius dot 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 and a very stable genius at that.